Um, so this is Colleen Shepard, and she's the executive director of the Calgary Regional Partnership, or the CRP for short. The CRP is an entrepreneurial collaboration of principalities representing over 1.4 million people. Um, for over 13 years, Colleen has directed the development of the partnership's flagship initiatives, including the Calgary Metropolitan Plan, which guides growth associated with the forecasted 2 million new residents expected to come to the region in the next 40 years. She works closely with a board of 10 mayors and partners with all other levels of government, business, and industry. Uh, she's also directed on several boards, including the Doorway, which is a business-oriented not-for-profit that helps young people exit street life by generating their own plans for integrating with mainstream culture. Um, Mrs. Shepard also participates regularly as a Grizzly. The Grizzly Den is a forum <laughs> where clients who are undertaking career transformation Career transformation efforts pitch themselves a panel of influential Calgary business leaders in terms of feedback, mentorship, hey, and possibly good guys. Hey, hey, so he's excited, okay. there you go. <laughs> <laughs> That's the right word. Um, she also holds a master's degree in leadership, bachelor's in social work. She grew up in Calgary and has two grown children, Melody and Andreas, and two amazing grandchildren, Emma and <laughs> uh, before I go to the best of all, we also found we happen to know a lot of similar people in the same network. I don't know how we haven't met yet, but yeah. there we go. But best of all, she's an alumni of Louise Dean School. This year ended in 1984. And if that isn't enough, I invite you to please. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it's seven exciting yeah. to be here. So I distinctly remember. Call. It was my doctor, Dr. Dunn. She said, Colleen, the test came back positive. You're two months pregnant. <laughs> okay. I was terrified. I was so terrified, I, I my stomach dropped. How was I going to take care of a baby? I was 16 years old. And I had just gotten off the street. You know, I lived on the street here, like right down the road since I was 13 years old. So I had no education, none. No skills. I had no furniture in my empty apartment. So what was I going to do? And how was I going to do this? But so somehow I knew that I needed to bring this baby into the world. So I prayed, I prayed, I said, Dear God, help me like, figure this out. I can't do this, I don't know what to do. I said, help, help me understand what my next step is. And so the next day I decided I'm going to give my baby up for adoption. It's the right thing, right? It's the right thing to do. So I knew a lady, Mrs. Baxter, in my church that I was going to. And she had a private adoption agency. So Mrs. Baxter told me, you can pick your own parents to help you. So I made Mrs. Baxter work. I made her work. We must have gone through 50 families across Canada. She had to actually fly to Vancouver. She flew to Toronto. And finally, I found the family. They were the McKenzie's. The McKenzie's were both accountants. So they were smart. They had a house. Mrs. McKenzie was 32. Mr. McKenzie was 36. They were going to be able to give my baby a life. I just believed I could never give my baby. Right? A normal life. That a 16 year old kid that just got off the street could not give That is until the night I went into labor. So it was a beautiful night. I remember it like the back of my hand. It was a full moon in September. It was a balmy night. And you know the kind of night where the, the full moon is up there in the sky and the ripples, the, uh, you can see like the clouds rippling? So I went for a walk because my labor was super slow. And I thought, you know, I'm going to walk myself into labor. So I walked and I walked and I walked faster and faster and faster and faster. And then, but something was happening to me. And I, I just felt this feeling. And it was coming. You know, you're supposed to keep this baby. And I thought, no, no, forget it. That's, I'm prepared for this. I'm aware, this is biology talking to me, right? It's saying, no, uh, you know, keep your baby in a, in, in 
know, I'm not going to do I'm going to do the right thing. But you know what? The right thing was to keep my baby. So I, I summons up every ounce of courage I had, seriously, every little bit of faith in my own self. And I called Mrs. Baxter. And I said, I said uh, Mrs. Baxter, I have something to tell you. I can't explain it. And, and I didn't want to break the Mackenzie's heart. They've been waiting for this baby, right? We chose this family. I said, I have to keep this my baby. And she said, Colleen, honey, I know. I'm going to call the Mackenzie's for you. I'll see you at the hospital. So when I brought my new beautiful baby Melody home from the hospital, I was 16 years old. I had nothing. I had no clothes. I mean, I didn't prepare to have a bring a baby home. I was giving my baby to the Mackenzie's. So my daughter spent the first three months sleeping in a dresser drawer. Yeah. <laughs> right? Now they make boxes for babies. But back then, you know, I was really like, oh. But a dresser drawer on the floor of my empty apartment. Well, cut to today. You know. 2017, 32 years later, my daughter's 32. There was a huge journey in between that time. I could have never known then that I could not only be an awesome mom, but I could, I could have an impact in the community. And it was a, it was a journey. And I learned a couple of things, just like three or four things that I that were so important to me. One is take 100% responsibility for your life, no matter what. We are not a victim. I was not a victim of my circumstance. And lots of times, I remember I didn't fit in with the programs. I was either too young to get funding for this, or I just didn't fit with the system. So I had to do work around all the time and figure it out. But because I was responsible for my own life, I knew I could do it. I could make a difference. I could make that happen. And forgiveness. Forgive yourself every minute. Moms yell at their kids. Moms screw up every mom. No matter whether they're 45 or they're 16 or they're 20. You're going to screw up. Kids are great at forgiveness, by the way. So forgive yourself and move on. And keep going. And have faith that life is around you, up, under you, supporting you, even if it doesn't feel like it, because it is. The other thing is you can't become yourself by yourself. I found that out. Mrs. Baxter was my first mentor. And I sought mentors after that to help me. Like, to get into school, to figure out what I want to do with my life and my career. And we're here today, you know, all the women that have come today to connect is because we want to help and connect. Because we've either been there or we, you know, we just love to give. Like, uh, Emily Layla, she's, she's here because she loves to be here, and she wants to help, and she means it. And she says, call me up to come to your garage. She's not just saying that, she really means it. <laughs> so I'll leave you with a couple, one, one last thing, maybe. Take good care of yourself. Radical self-care is extremely important for you. I remember I used to have to take my kids to the children's cottage. It's still here, it's great. Um, I need a respite. Reach out and ask for help. Be vulnerable. Don't try to be, be too tough and make it on your own. And, you know, we all, I do try to tell myself that every day. Even coming here, this is the first time I've ever told this story to more than my children. Right? That's vulnerable, but we have to. I learn it every day. Be soft. Let people know if you need help. Because they're here to help, right? And anyway, um, the, you are the reason why I'm here. God just brought me into this world. I met Jamila because I have been wanting a way to connect. And so, of course, I wanted to do it. Of course, I didn't know she was coming. <laughs> right? We didn't know. I didn't know you were coming. So, life opens up in beautiful ways. And being a young mom is so awesome. It's a challenge, but it's the best thing in the world. Best thing in the world. And you have your kids grow up, right? And you're a young mom. And then I mean, I have, I'm turning 50, I'm so happy. <laughs> but I have a six year old granddaughter and a four year old grandson, so I'm in a loving life. And uh, you have a lot of energy when you're young to be a mom. Anyway, thank you so much for letting me witnessing my story and listening, and thanks for letting me connect with you. It's so important. I just love everybody. And the babies. I want to be a cuddler, by the way. Yeah, I know. <laughs>